Hello everyone. This is the day four where we'll be discussing about the different domains, the subdomains within the identity and access management. Uh, there are three primary domains and then definitely you have a few more which organization uh, use it under the IAM umbrella. So the first one is identity governance and administration. So here if you see IGA, the second one is access management. The third one is privilege access management. So these are the main three divisions. We do have PKI sometimes considered under the identity and access management. And then we have directories also as one of the functions. Do let us in the comment section if you feel that your organization is using any more um, tools or technologies within the IEM umbrella so that others can also know about them. So first, let's quickly jump into uh, what is identity governance and administration. So first, we'll discuss about the foundations of IAM over here on the three domains. We have identity governance and administration. The primary purpose is it manages users' identities and ensures compliance. IGA, the primary reason is compliance. Now there are, before I get into it, there are main three reasons, right, why you use IAM. You can try to tag this with any of the other um, sub reasons also. But then based on my experience, there are three main reasons. First is compliance, where every organization is trying to get into a tool or onboard a tool primarily to ensure that they are compliant. Either they are managing user data or they are managing um, the user information, user data, or any of the systems. It has to function in a certain way. So compliance comes into picture. Then security posture. Every system that you're trying to improve, one of the reasons where you're trying to improve it further is to make it more security, to improve the security posture, like adding more level of MFA, adding more level of authentication mechanism, or you're trying to add a stronger firewall, uh, trying to create more robust directories. What do we mean by that? That is you're improving the security posture. And then you have the user experience, the third one. Because let's say on the customer side, if you have a lot of customers and they want a seamless login experience, and because you are providing them seamless login experience, they will stick to your application. They will recommend other people to your application, whether it is banking or any of the applications, e-commerce, and eventually that would drive revenue. So if you are compliant, that ensures that you do not fall trap for any of the fines and hence, You'll continuously grow your business. If you are improving your security posture, threat protection is one of the thing. Eventually, when you are protected and you are trying to uh, ensure a lot of the threats are covered, you will not come across account takeovers or breaches. And when you are improving the user experience, you have user retention, which eventually improves revenue. So these are the main reasons. So now let's try to tag how all of this is relevant here on the different domains. So first we have IGA, again, we were discussing identity governance and administration. This manages user identities and ensure compliance. IGA and also component of security, in posture improvement. Access, you have the workforce IAM and the customer IAM. So the workforce primarily deals with the security posture and the customer deals with user experience and security posture as well. Yes, there are co compliance component, but a lot of the time organizations do not go ahead and buy an access management tool just to solve a compliance problem. That's where IGA falls into picture. Privilege access management and sorry, on the access side, it controls your user access to resources, ensuring authentication authorization. Privilege access management secures and monitors accounts with elevated privileges. For example, the entire NHI world, managing non-human identity, server accounts, service accounts, you are putting them inside a vault and then monitoring all the actions, right? This is one of compliance. The other is improving the security posture. So identity governance, primarily used for compliance and security posture. Access management, security posture and user experience most of the time. And privilege access management, compliance and definitely heavily on improving the posture as well.
So now let's jump into the little bit more detailed dive into IGN administration. So this focus on who should have access and why. Why do you need access? Role based, role based access, attribute based. Why do you need them, right? And this ensures that when a user joins an organization, till the time they are being given access to a certain system by default, which we call as birthright access. From there, they are requesting a level of access to various applications, getting access to different roles, their access being reviewed, right? And eventually when they leave the organization, you trigger the lever process and deprovisioning. So user lifecycle management, right? That from the time user joins an organization till they are moved to various roles and they leave, leave the organization. That's where we call join and move a lever. Access request and approvals, what level of access they need and who should be reviewing those access. Let's say as a user, I request access. My manager should be the first one to review and approve. Then it goes to the application team's manager or the application owner. Access certification, we need to review and attest, ensure that, okay, whatever access has been given is valid and for a certain period of time. Eventually you're doing all of this through policy and role management. Policy is the heart of any system any IGA access system without policy none of the function like user getting roles right access revoking this one small that you see here right cycle is because of a policy somewhere designed to support this some of the key tools are sale point savian symmetries luri observe id and many more IGA tools it, it's just an evolving market and common use case is manager reviewing employee access quarterly, which comes under access uh, reviews. Okay. So let's move quickly into the identity, into the access management. And before that, yeah, here you have the identity lifecycle management, user lifecycle management, managing the user roles and access, then doing an access request and approval. Then you are reviewing those access through access certifications. Eventually everything is facilitated using policy and role management where you're updating, enforcing access policies. So user joins and user leaves. Exit. Joins. This is where your IGA plays a major role. So now, uh, here we will be discussing primarily about access management. The primary uh, function, it focuses on how users authenticate and access the application. Its core functions are single sign-on, MFA, federation, session management. Tools are Okta, Ping, Microsoft, Entra, One Login, many other tools, right? And common use cases are employee logs in once and accesses multiple applications securely. So the primary use case here is as a user, now you have got all the level of access, right? Now you will try to log in. You'll be presented with the username and password screen followed by MFA. Once this combination is done, then you're authenticated. And then you have the right level of access. So in order to do this, definitely there are various protocols working on the backend, like SAML, OAuth, OpenID and all. We'll discuss that in the future sessions. Okay. So here, these are the components of a secure authentication system. First, you have single sign-on. Allows users to access multiple applications with just one login. You log in once and every application is there for you to log in. Then how do you improve the security? By using implementing multi-factor authentication eventually ensuring that when two systems are talking to each other, you're building a trust and achieving federation. System one, system two. And ensuring that a user once logged in, the session should be managed. They should not be logged out within let's say 15 minutes, 20 minutes, so on and so forth. Okay, so all of these are really key concepts which eventually we'll be discussing. Then let's talk about the privilege access management world. PAM primarily focus on securing and controlling privilege accounts. 
let's discuss some of its core functionalities. The core functionalities of PAM includes credential vaulting and rotation, session recording and monitoring, just-in-time privilege access, elevation, and privilege session isolation. Some of the key tools that we have in the market is CyberArk, Beyond Trust, Delenia, uh, and Sectona, Arcon. There are many, right? Common use case, admin password stored in PAM vaulted, rotated automatically. So here, see, when we started initially, you had the IJ where you, you had the majority of the user population. Then you moved into how users are able to log in. Here, from a user population also, you have the other population, the human and non-human. Here, we are primarily dealing with privilege non-human accounts okay so that's where you are monitoring them you are recording them right you're vaulting the passwords for these server accounts and service account and ensuring that privilege escalation elevation all of that is happening on time okay so that's the basic use case of privilege access management systems So it securely stores and rotates privilege credentials, records and monitor privilege user sessions, grant temporary elevated access when needed, isolates privilege sessions to prevent lateral movement, primarily for non-human type accounts. Because by default, the user accounts, uh, as, as a user, I can manage my username and password. But as a non-human, definitely you cannot be uh, making the password move around here and there. Right? So that's important for us to ensure that we are ensuring that we are securely storing and rotating those privileged credentials, recording them, because anyone can have access and then can do any activity because sometimes the owners are also not tagged for these non-human accounts. Hence, we need to record and monitor the privileged user session and grant very, I mean, definitely it's a temporary, but you have to grant elevated privileges for them to run a lot of services and then isolate the privilege sessions to prevent lateral movement. So eventually if you see these are uh, measures or controls that is kept primarily to avoid any security breach. So hence we discussed PAM primarily deals with improving the security posture. But yes, why we are doing it? Because there are compliance reasons to tag for that as well. Now how they differ? Now quickly do a, let's do a recap of how they differ. IGA governs who gets access and why. Access management controls how access is delivered. And PAM ensures how accounts, specific accounts are securely elevated and privileged access is granted and monitored. This deals with almost all types of accounts. Access also deals with all types of account. PAM is primarily dealing with privilege accounts. Here is a quick framework of how what is being done on the IGA level, it's who gets access, why access is granted on the access management side, you are able to do SSO, MFA and federation. And on the PAM side, you have elevated access and privilege access, eventually comprising of the identity and access management framework. So again, let's take an example of how they work together. New hire is created in an HR, IGA provisions the account, access management allows them to log in and pa protects the admin level access. So IJ is the governance backbone, access is a secure gateway, and PAM is the privilege safeguard. That's how we can understand them. Interview tips. First, to understand IGA, AM, and PAM, we should know who gets access and why, and how are they login, and try to explain them what privilege protection, what type of accounts, what are the different ways in which login happens. These are some of the ways in which you can explain them, keeping in mind the who, why, and how, and the privilege protection. And also try to at least learn one tool from each domain if you're trying to get into IEM roles, right? Because the future is moving towards converged IEM, and uh, there will be roles in the future where you will be asked to uh, maybe manage some part of governance versus some part of access. And interesting thing, the assignment for this one is pick up one IEM tool, any tool, list two key features and identify which domain it belongs to and put them on the comment section. So with this, I end day four and I'll see you tomorrow on day five. Thank you very much.